Hey, how's it going? We are in Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 16 today. This is Jesus sending out his disciples, a large group of disciples, 72 or maybe 70. Uh, we're not exactly sure. Uh, but here is what happened with that. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, The kingdom of God is near you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, Go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that sticks to our feet we wipe off against you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes, but it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted to the skies? No, you will go down to the depths. He who listens to you listens to me. He who rejects you rejects me. But he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. So, very important section of Scripture here. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Verse 2, I love... Uh, how this goes in the book of Luke, because Jesus is sending people out into the harvest field, and he says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So he's showing them, telling them about the need. He's saying, pray for people to go. And then the very next verse, go, exclamation point here in, in this uh, rendering. I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. So the harvest is plentiful. What does that mean? That means there's lots of work to be done. There's lots of people that need to know God loves them. Lots of people that need to know uh, that they have value and that there's new life that's possible, that there's everlasting life available. It's just, uh, there's so much need. So many people need help in so many different ways. And so the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And then he says, go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. So the harvest might be plentiful, but the harvest involves some difficulties. The harvest involves some trials. The harvest involves being a lamb among wolves. So you want to be aware of the dangers, protect yourself appropriately in another place. Jesus says, so be uh, shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. So that means be aware of the dangers, but in your awareness, don't be, uh, don't be dark-hearted about it. Don't turn to evil to protect yourself. Keep your innocence while you're looking at the dangers and being smart to protect yourself. So, shrewd as snakes, innocent as doves. Uh, then verse 6 is a powerful ministry principle because this is all talking about sending people out to do ministry. And he says, verse 6, Jesus is given instructions. He says, if a man of peace is there when you enter the house your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. So one of the big challenges that I've had is, you know, sometimes when you're sharing the gospel, or you're talking about Jesus or, you know, that sort of a thing, it can go well or it can go very poorly. Uh, there can be times when we're trying to minister and talk about the love of God and, and people can react very negatively to that. And uh, uh, here it says, uh, if a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. I always had difficulty having my peace return to me. <laughs> like you extend uh, the hand and then when it's crushed, you know, it's like, oh, and you get all sad and everything. But uh, I've, I've started to learn this secret of letting God's peace uh, return to me. When I extend that and it's not properly received, I just let the peace return to me. That's good stuff. 
one of the interesting things uh, in this reading of it, you know, this time as I'm going through it with regards to wiping the dust off your feet, you know, verses 10 and 11, but when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that sticks to our feet, we wipe off against you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is near. So what that says to me is, it's okay to move on to greener ministry pastures. If you're trying to, you know, communicate the truths of God to somebody or to a group of people and it's not working, well, move on. That's okay. Be sure of this, the kingdom of God is near. But at the same time, you know, you don't have to keep beating your head against the wall. Uh, now, there are times to be praying for somebody for a long time. That's good. That's great. But uh, at the same time, uh, it's okay to move on. We see that example here. Move on. Wipe the dust off your feet. Move on. So that's okay. And then we've got the woe part. You know, uh, woe to you, Chorazin, Bethsaida. If the miracles that were performed in, performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they'd have repented long ago. So they're Jesus is saying, woe to you. How do we interpret the woes? Is this like God, you know, I'm going to kill you, you rotten pieces of garbage? I think it's more along the lines of what we see here in Matthew chapter 23, the great woe chapter. If you've ever wondered why they crucified Jesus, read chapter 23. This is a public rebuke of the religious establishment of the day. Very strong. But it finishes, if you go to chapter 23, verse 37, the end of the chapter, Jesus says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. So the woe is also a grieving, you know, a, a desire to see people receive and, you know, know the goodness and the love of God and all the different things that come with that, but their unwillingness to have that, then there's... There's consequences for that. There's, you know, bad things can come from that. So there's this, oh, I've, I've wanted you to come. So that's, a, I think, a good way to interpret the woes, not as a violent anger. You know, I think that's off in understanding what Jesus is saying here. But, but, a, uh, but including along with potential for judgment and the negative things that come with that, including that heart of, I wish you would turn. Um, it's, a, it's a sad thing. And then verse 16, again, we're talking about rejection. Uh, he who listens to you listens to me. He who rejects you rejects me. But he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. So we shouldn't take personally rejection. If you're going to do ministry in any capacity, you're going to start a small group and you invite people to your small group and they say, no, I don't want to come to your small group. You have to face rejection in different ways. You know, <laughs> if you want to well, put videos on the internet then people, you know, some people will like it, some people won't. And you have to be able to face that rejection. Here Jesus says, you know, as, as long as we're honoring the message that Jesus brought, they're either accepting the message or they're rejecting the message. Now, of course, you can get in the way and be the problem, and they can reject you personally. But as long as you're presenting the message of the gospel, they're rejecting the message, not you. So don't take that personally. And also, if they're accepting the message, it's not because you're so awesome and amazing and all that. It's that they're accepting the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So make sure that we don't put ourselves into that spot. So let's pray. Let's pray to go and serve the Lord without fear, shrewd as snakes, and innocent as doves. So, Heavenly Father, we see this example of the, the 70 or 72 that went to go, uh, to, to go spread your gospel. And, oh Lord, we see them stepping out because the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. And, Lord, we know today the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. So, Lord, we ask you to send workers into your harvest field. And for those who you would call into that, let us go. Um, but we know we're like lambs among wolves. Therefore, let us be shrewd as snakes, aware of the pitfalls and the dangers, but innocent as doves at the same time, not, not getting darkened in our spirit and in our heart and getting ugly, but instead uh, still showing your love, your mercy, your grace, and your kindness to this world. So, Lord, let it be.